Hello and welcome to the introduction video of Flow Reactor. In this video we are going to learn the basic concept of Flow Reactor by creating a simple graph which changes the color of a cube when clicking on it. So let's create a new graph first. Simply right click in the project view and select create Flow Reactor new graph. Let's name it change color. Double click on the graph to open it up. Now every new graph has a default on start node. This is an event node which gets called on start similar to the mono behavior start method. You can of course have as many on start nodes as you like, but for now we just leave this one here alone. For our graph we need an unmask down event node. Right click on the canvas and search for unmask down. The unmask down node listens to unmask down events happening on a collider. We're going to assign the graph later directly to our cube. That's why we can simply assign the owner game object as the collider here. Great. Now we are going to connect the output of our unmask down node with a new set material node. This node will change the material of the cube. Let's assign the owner game object to the game object here as well. Now let's create two new materials which we are going to use for our example. Let's name the first one matte blue and the second one matte green. Let's assign the matte blue material to our set material node and in our empty scene create a new cube. This one will have the matte green material assigned. Ok, we can now assign the graph directly onto the cube object. This will automatically create a flow reactor component with the assigned graph. The flow reactor component is responsible for running our graph. Let's click play and see if it already works. Perfect. Now what if we want to set the cube material back to its original material when clicking again? Well, we could use a simple boolean check. But for the sake of this tutorial I'm going to introduce you to subgraphs. Subgraphs can be seen as states. It's basically a graph inside of another graph. But unlike our main graph, or let's call it root graph, subgraphs can also have a deactive state. So that means that all nodes in a root graph, especially event nodes, are active at any time. Whereas nodes in a subgraph can be active or deactive. In case of our onmask down event node, we can now control when the event node should actually listen to an event and when not. Let's have a closer look. First select both nodes and hit the Ctrl, Alt and S key. Alternatively you can also click on the Create Subgraph button at the top. We now have created a new subgraph out of the two selected nodes. Open the subgraph by double click on the subgraph node. You see our two nodes here plus two additional new nodes which are specifically for subgraphs. On Enter Graph gets called as soon as we enter the subgraph and the subgraph gets activated. You can of course have multiple on enter graph nodes as well. With the exit graph we can exit the subgraph and therefore deactivating it. What's special about exit graphs nodes is that you can also have multiple of them. And for every new exit graph node we will have a new output on our subgraph node. This is a great way for controlling the flow of a graph depending on what happens inside of a subgraph. Oh and by the way. You can also nest subgraphs inside of subgraphs. Ok, back to our graph. So our subgraph should actually do nothing when entering. It should only listen to an unmask down event, which we already do with the node here. We only have to connect the output of the set material to the exit graph node. Perfect. Let's move back to the root graph. Copy the subgraph node and name it green. Now connect it with the other subgraph. We just need to do some changes in this subgraph, so let's quickly open it up. Select the set material node and change the material to our green material. Alright, now back to the root graph. We now need to connect the on start node to the first subgraph to make sure it gets activated on start. Last step, 
Collect the output of the second subgraph with the first one. That's it. Let's test our scene. At runtime, Flowrector always creates a new runtime instance of our graph. If you want to see the actual running graph, simply click on Open Instance on the Flowrector component. Great, it's working! Congratulations, you have now completed the introduction of Flowrector. Make sure to check out the other tutorials and documentation available at flowrector.io.